Hey there, it's Dane from Garage Strength. So I got a question about uh, warming up and in regards to throwing, competing, lifting. Um, so I'm going to go over each my opinion and what I think is a good warm up in each facet of training and uh, how I like my kids to warm up and how I like to warm up myself as a weightlifter and a shot putter. Um, so first I'm going to start with, let's talk about warming up before throwing practice. Uh, and this could be any normal throwing practice in the summertime. Uh, what I like to have my kids do is overhead squats uh, with a bar, maybe some light front squats, Cossack squats, which means side to side squats to loosen up their groins. Um, and then they head out and throw. And then when they go out to throw, I like two to three standing throws right into the the full throws, a couple of nice and easy full throws just to for a specific warm up before they start turning it on. Um, I think it's a good warm up to to loosen the joints up, get the body moving, work on the flexibility, but it doesn't get you too tired before the actual training session. Um, now I do change it up a little bit when it comes to wintertime throwing. So I have you know today we threw outside. It was 30 degrees, really windy. Um, I like to have kids do a little bit more overhead squats to get the flexibility in the shoulders and the hips loosened up. A little more of the Cossack squats again and then uh, some bar drills inside. Maybe like one set of ten uh, full spins with a bar, loaded bar on their back. Uh, that way they get like a specific warm up inside before we head out and usually um, some of these kids can go right outside and get right into full throws. Uh, and then they can get, you know, 15, 20 good throws in the cold weather before they start to, you know, get a little fatigued from the weather and the wind and frustrated with how cold their hands are and all that stuff. So that's in regards to uh, the, the throwing warm-up in the wintertime. Uh, now I'll talk about, you know, throwing warm-up in a competition. Um... Now again, I stated earlier that I like to have kids go in and take one, two stands and they go right to fulls. Uh, the reason I like doing this is because you go to high school meets, college meets, and open meets, and you might only get two or three warm-ups. So I like the kids to feel you know, ready from a full position that they're ready to get in and attack the shot right away. So they get all six throws so that they're not using the first and second throws of the meet as an extended warm-up. So when it comes to competition warm-ups, I'll have them do some Cossack squats, uh, maybe some lunges, maybe some side-to-side -side stretches uh, to loosen up their abs, lower back, and then uh, maybe hold a shot, do a couple dry rounds here and there. Usually I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, but some kids do like that. But pretty much right away, you know, get in, get in the circle, take one standing throw, one non-reverse full, get your second non or get your second full in, a nice easy reverse, and it's usually time to throw. Um, and that also makes it easy. And but uh, some big meets, you know, they only give you two warm-up throws, so it's, it's good for kids to be able to go in and take two full throws right away. You know, they're ready, they're mentally ready. Whereas the other guys are thinking, oh man, you know, I didn't get fully warmed up, I'm not ready, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so that's the reason why I like a little bit shorter warm-ups for uh, a competition. Um, they can't do overhead squats because we don't bring the bars with us to the meets, but they still can do lunges, Cossack squats, and you know side leg swings, stuff like that, just to loosen up a little bit. But again, I'm not a big fan of, of too much of a warm-up because that can lead to fatigue within the competition. Um, now, I'll go over what I like as weightlifting warm-ups. So on an upper body day, um, I'll have a kid, let's say he'll do some external rotations just to lube up the shoulders, uh, some work on the band pull-aparts, pull and then some push-ups. And then we get into our, our prime movements. Um, and of course they're going to have, you know, if a kid's benching, they'll do one or two warm-up sets on the bench before they actually get get after it. Uh, for 
my leg days, which for throwers are always based on the Olympic lifts as a prime movement, uh, you know, overhead squats, front squats, and then there are uh, one or two uh, light warm-ups just to feel the groove in the Olympic lifts, and then they're right after the Olympic lifts. So again, the leg lifts, you know, they might do a little less warming up. Uh, upper body will do a little bit more, you know, trying to get the rotators warmed up, maybe trap three warmed up, band pull parts, like I said, uh, get some push-ups going. But again, not a big, I'm not a huge fan of long warm-ups. I like, you know, two or three basic movements, get, get the work done, stay focused during your warm-up, and then that gets the mental edge going to get to get after it during the training session so warm-ups are good keep them short so that you're ready to get after it in the competition in the training session or in the lifting session all right thanks for the questions feel free to email me dane at garagestrength.com message me on uh, the garage strength facebook uh, twitter my name is at garage strength uh, Yep, any way you can get a hold of me, feel free to ask me plenty of questions. Thanks a lot.